It's all about energy and action when it comes to Rada & Co. We just spoke to Tony and Robert from Rada & Co in Melbourne. They run the number one property management business for the whole of Harcourts across Australia. They run it with incredibly high energy, have an extraordinary culture in their business. And we spoke to them about what they see as the growth opportunities uh, in the coming months. So make sure you check out our new vlog. Hope you enjoy it. Right, guys, well, uh, welcome back to our Surviving COVID-19 series. Well, really, we're just uh, we're, we're partway through the pandemic. So hopefully it's uh, not surviving COVID. COVID, but it's uh, now sort of moving through. Um, I've got some great guests here today. These guys are a young, dynamic team. They've got four offices, uh, residential offices, one commercial office um, in Victoria. It's Tony Lombardi and Robert Osimo from Harcourts, Rada & Co. We'll get to them in just a second. Um, down below, there's a subscribe button for YouTube. Make sure you hit that. Uh, you'll be able to uh, get our interviews as they drop. Also, um, follow homely.com.au on Spotify and also on iTunes uh, for our podcast. Welcome, guys. Uh, Tony and Robert. But thanks for giving us a few minutes today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Guys, give us a little bit of an overview. You've got uh, four offices, at uh, residential offices, one commercial. You're running between about 80 and 100 staff. Um, what sort of area in uh, Victoria you operate in? Give us a bit of an, a breakdown of the demographic there. Uh, we're mostly in the north. So our residential offices are in Reservoir, Thomas Down, Epin and Mill Park. We service all the suburbs in between. So we've got you know, Laylaw and Willert and South Morang and Crescent that we service. Uh, and our commercial business runs out of our Epping office. Um, and a lot of the commercial business that we do is in Epping, spilling over a little bit to, to Camberfield and Craigieburn. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, uh, core area for us. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So four offices and obviously a large sort of property management department as well. Yeah, very, very large property management department. So uh, number the number one uh, property management department in in Harcourts, Australia, actually. So quite large. Um, we, we run a fairly large team. There's a department head that takes care of that, um, obviously, with, with our guidance through, through management. Okay. All right. Guys, let's drill down into what the last couple of months has been look like and how that sort of shaped the next couple of months um, for you. You run... Uh, so how many people would, in your 80 to 100 staff would be in your sales team? I'd say probably about 30 to 40. Yeah, approximately that. Yep, 30 to 40 across those. Okay. And so we've obviously talked about some of the big changes and everyone sort of had to adapt in the same way, working from home and Zoom and all that sort of stuff. What's some some key strategies you've had in place to maintain culture and also to sort of uh, keep productivity high and also uh, confidence and also morale high? What sort of things have you put in place around that? I think the, the most important thing that you can do is, is stay active. Um, I, I feel like not just in real estate, but just in general, a lot of businesses that have the, the, the ability to operate have sort of uh, retreated, sort of burying their heads in the sand. Mm. Uh, it's important that whatever you do, you, you remain active, you, you get as much interaction as you can with the team, whether it be in the office or, you know, we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings now and, and yeah. we just had our first, um, you know, full office Zoom meeting uh, last week, which went, you know, quite well. And, it was a fun experience to do and everyone's with different backgrounds and stuff. So, <laughs> you know, we're, we're having fun with it too. But it's just about making sure that we, 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 we keep as close to normal as possible, you know, bearing in mind all the restrictions that we've got with uh, COVID-19 uh, and making sure that the, the social distancing is in place in the offices. But those that are able to come and work in the office, we prefer that they do come and work in, in the office. Uh, we're complying with everything that we need to do within the walls of the office. Um, I think that routine and keeping as, as close to a routine as, as possible uh, is important to can you know for, for us to continue to be able to provide uh, the service that our clients expect. Yeah. Okay. All right. So when when you're saying staying active, so for the sales guys, um, it's actively um, chasing down their pipeline and uh, yeah. and remaining active and very present in front of their clients. You said a lot of offices have sort of um, probably not closed down, but have certainly lost momentum around that. So what's some of the things that you've done around remaining active or staying present with your clientele? Look, I think I think. Uh comes hand in hand with a bit of the digital technology because obviously you're not having those face-to-face -face communication, uh, that face-to-face -face communication as much as you would like to have. Um, especially if we go back six months ago, it was all about face-to-face -face communication, getting the guys active in doing that. They were out door knocking and doing all those sorts of things. We've really embraced the, the digital technology at the moment. We're using um, digital platforms to be able to uh, get out to our clients. The, the guys are making a hell of a lot more calls at the moment. Um, they're using uh, their programs and try and get a, a, 
a bit more of a community aspect to themselves at the moment to be to be really fair so they're utilizing uh, a program called reader um, they're utilizing uh, active pipe uh, and they are bringing that back into our crm system to to really try and make sure that they can keep in contact with as many clients as possible um, but to also have that communication and that touch point and i think that that's probably been the, the biggest change if we go back probably what, three, four months now? This is all, to be really fair for us, this is probably something that we were doing pre-coronavirus. So we were gearing ourselves up to make the guys a lot more efficient uh, and to be more in touch yeah. with their client database. I think there was not so much resistance, but uh, a little bit of reluctance to take on, on board all the technology that mm -hmm. we've implemented over the last few months. Um, but now going into uh, this crisis, the team has really embraced it. And I think we're getting a lot more out of the, the technology that we've implemented uh, right now than we otherwise would have. Um, and so we're quite fortunate that we had been, yeah, that was one of our pet projects for what yeah. maybe the last 12 months. Yeah. A lot of the implementation has happened over the last three to four. Uh, but having, you know, over the last 12 months set up these, these platforms and these, uh, we've got new CRM and we've got all these things that uh, artificial intelligence programs that plug into it. Um, it's really keeping the guys busy and they're using this time, aside from doing their private inspections, which takes more time now than you know, having a half hour open, having 10 people through. To get 10 people through a house now, you know, you, you, you've probably got to you know, allocate a few hours to that to make sure that you're, you're complying with their restrictions. Um, and outside of that, they've been really active working on their database. So together with the technology, they've, they've been able to, to get in touch with their database and make sure that the data that we've got is usable data, um, it's up to date, it's clean, it's relevant to the, the consumer that we're contacting. Okay, so you made a, a really, really strong shift to digital last year. What was the catalyst for that? What, what did you see or what did you, um, how was your strategy um, formulated around that? How, what, why did you make such a strong move to digital early on? Look, I, I, think, I think it's a little bit of foresight, um, trying to get a gauge as to where the, the industry is going to be in, say, five to 10 years' time. Um, Digital is the way of the future. If you look at some of the industries and um, outside of real estate, what they've been able to do and the digital platforms that they're able to use to, to make, uh, I suppose, their industry more efficient, to make their, their people more efficient. I think that was our, our catalyst. I think we, we looked a little bit at the bank and how they're operating and how, you know internet banking and how far that's gone from where it started to where it is now and yes. how you communicate with those, yeah. with those, um, with those major uh, those major companies that we deal with on a regular basis. So we decided, I think, probably about 12 months ago that we were going to push towards digital. Um, and I think we're really proud now that we've, we've been able to, you know, potentially sit around that 95% paperless for sales and probably about that as of today, uh, we've launched a couple of things today, you know, 80, 85% now uh, property management department. So it, it was a push. That's an astounding, that's an, that's an astounding statistic. That's, uh, that's impressive. 95% paperless for your sales department. That's yeah, 100%. Apart from the odd um, sales contract that we need to sign uh, purely on a, uh, a basis where we, we didn't have the, data, uh, the, the contracts early enough, yeah. um, that would be it. Everything else, all of our auction contracts, our authorities, um, everything that we do now is, is completely digital. It's start to finish. Start to finish. So really? no more no more sales files. We don't, we don't have a sales file. Uh, that doesn't exist we in our office. Yeah. We have a digital one. That's it, it makes archiving a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. One but thing I've noticed with... That, oh, sorry. Sorry, Dave. I was just going to make the point that the, the technology is something that consumers are coming to expect now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they want to deal with, a, well, with, with you know, people that are in that space. Um, they expect that with whatever transaction uh, they're doing at the moment, that there's going to be some sort of assistance uh, with technology, whether they're you know, catching an Uber or you know, even, you know, I'll give you an example today. I was in, I went through Macca's to get a coffee and uh, I ordered the coffee and then I realised I didn't have my wallet on me. Um, and usually I've got my phone, like a smartphone on that I can pay with my phone. And I looked at my, at my wrist and I haven't got that phone on, that, oh, sorry, my watch, sorry. I haven't got that watch on today. Uh, and so, like in, in two seconds, I called I called my wife at home and she gave me the credit card number. By the time I got from the ordering speaker to the window, I had set up pay on my phone. <laughs> uh, so I made it just in time, all day able to pay. So, you know, consumers are coming to expect that sort of efficiency at the moment. 
Um, and I think that a lot of agents are resistant to that because they see the embracement, the embracing that technology as making themselves irrelevant. But I think that we're more relevant than ever because the one thing that technology can't replace is the empathy that we're able to provide with our customers. The technology doesn't have that empathy. So it's not so much about, uh, about replacing the agent, it's about enhancing what the agent is able yeah. to offer their clients. Um, and we can see that that's the way that everything's going. Um, I think real estate has probably been a little bit slow on the uptake, but it's inevitable that we're going to be there. So I don't think there's, there's any point in fighting it. I think the best thing to do is to get out in front of it, to embrace it, um, and to show this is a great uh, time for us to show that even with all the technology and the online platforms and everything that we've got in place, that as agents in the transaction, we're still a vital part of that transaction. And as an industry, we're still, we're still relevant. We're just more efficient. Yeah, 100%. Mate, your wife's clearly a lot more understanding than uh, than mine. I'm sure if I rang home to get the credit card to buy a coffee, I'd be in trouble. Oh, so, shit. Uh, you didn't know what was going on. I was like, quick, 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 get the credit card. She's like, oh, <laughs> get the credit card. I'm next. I'm next in the window. <laughs> God forbid oh, you're mate, hungry, mate. Just, God forbid you're hungry. The window, the, the, uh, the assistant put out the, uh, the FBOS machine. It's good. I just made it. No, it's uh, you know, I, I drove out of there, there thinking, oh, that's just great. No, I didn't have it set up two minutes ago. I had a need for it. And, you know, the technology... Set up and the ease of use to be able to set up Apple Pay in that you know that one minute space was was just unbelievable. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So just talk to me about that um, the digital side of things with the salespeople because I know that a lot of salespeople need it front um, front of mind. They need to see it every every day in front of them. How do you find with your CRM and a lot of the digital systems that um, they're coping with that or have they made the change? Look, I, I think um, look that's that was the the tricky part and trying to find programs uh, or software that was able to facilitate that is, is the hardest part. Um, I think our CRM system that we've now got, we've been able to build a lot of technology around it and we've been able to build in um, some automation, automation to our clients, automation back to our agents. So that there's certain things that the agents have been reminded of on a regular basis um, that is, it's happening in the background that nobody needs to, to, to send to them, um, the system is already doing that for us. So it is keeping things top of mind awareness, uh, top of mind for them. Um, and I think it's just the programs that we've been able to do it. Look, we probably are a little bit, uh, I, I reckon the journey probably started with our conversation with Angus and, and Andrew from BidTracker, to be honest. Um, and they've been really good working with us to create um, a program of some software that's really good for us. They had a really, really good program. We obviously uh, were able to put a little bit of a spin on it for us to help us do what we needed to do. Um, and there's the amount of time and the efficiency that that particular program was able to, to save for us was, was, was amazing. I mean, you know, uh, if we're talking about um, staff costs and we're talking about efficiency and being able to, I think Rob's right, real estate has, has made a shift. And it more so in the last three to six months with, with coronavirus and where that's going to take us and the amount of digital technology that people are uptaking. Uh, I think you, you can never replace that human element in the transaction. So you still need someone there to be able to negotiate the best price, to be able to work with the vendors and the buyers and try and marry that all up together. Um, but the technology now means that we can spend more time doing that than sending out something or scanning something at the photocopier. I, I mean, we only need to go back. If I got my uh, uh, admin uh, manager here and she told you how long our receptionist would spend on a Monday and Tuesday scanning contracts from auctions on Saturday, probably was a day and a half of scanning. Um, 20 to 30 contracts on a Saturday scanning, then sending them off and the scan didn't happen and this didn't happen. It's all automated. We don't have to do any of that anymore. Uh, yeah. It's signed sent off, the buyer gets it, the vendor gets it, the solicitor from the vendor gets it, the solicitor from the buyer gets it, the agent gets it, and back at head office, they get it, and bang, we're off and, and, and it's done. So, you know, it's just around building, um, finding the right programs and making sure that we can keep things top of mind because obviously, like you said, if they don't see it, maybe they won't remember it. So you've got to still build in those that parameter around making sure that we can yeah. still get those reminders out to the agents, but without them having to go chase it. We want it right there for them. So they yeah. wake up, you know, uh, on, a, on a morning 
and by six o'clock in the morning, they've received their, their email from Rita saying, hey, this is what's going on. They've received an email from the accounts department saying, hey, we need to chase up this deposit because it was due today or it's due yesterday. Um, you need to chase up this finance clause because that's happening. Automated, 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 automated. Yeah. And Nothing like, for them to do. From a salesperson's point of view, uh, the technology helps them to, to get to the root of what the consumer is looking for. Yeah. If they're looking to buy in a certain area or they just you know, want to keep their finger in the pulse of prices around, uh, around properties that they own. So the interaction that the salespeople are having uh, with, their, with their customers is much more meaningful at the moment. And the technology helps us uh, with that immensely. Yeah, okay. Rather than just like throwing a, a dart at a dartboard and just hoping that they land anywhere, we, we can really target um, the, uh, the, the information that we're, that we're giving to our customers. And it's, it's tailored and it's unique to them. I, I, think, I think the biggest thing is around, you know, most top-end sales guys will have a personal assistant or two or three. And it's a bit, it's a bit like that. It's a bit like having a virtual assistant that's doing quite a lot of stuff for you in the background. So the agent can focus on what they do best, listing property, selling property, like speaking to agents, speaking to buyers, speaking to their vendors, giving feedback, building on relationships, as you said, yeah. as opposed to getting bogged down in sending an email and forwarding a contract and scanning something. I mean, that's, that's old school. Um, we don't do that anymore. Good. I get rid of the printers, uh, but I reckon I'd have a, I, I, I think the guys are, are still a little bit, uh, do, a little bit worried on it. But uh, I, I think I, at some it. point, I'm, I'm sure the printers won't, won't exist in our office. Oh, no, you could have a printer. There'd be a mutiny on the hands, I think, if you didn't. Um, <laughs> guys, just thinking about uh, your four offices, at what point did you, um, obviously, you've, you've taken over offices or, or built new offices along the, along the journey. When did you go from one to two, two to three, three to four? Um, and I'm just interested in what you would put down as some, some key um, strategies or some key learnings around the growth from going from one to two or indeed from one to four yeah. offices and including well, five offices, I suppose, including the commercial side of things. Yeah, so we opened our first office in 2010. That was uh, at Epping. Okay. Um, and to be honest with you, I mean, we're going through a difficult time at the moment. Uh, and one of the reasons why I'm so you know, positive and optimistic is because what we're going through at the moment is nothing compared to, you know, what the, the, the ringer that we were put through when we opened our doors. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just post, just start, post GFC, right? In, in uh, it was just, G G just GFC, post yeah. GFC, yeah. so 2010. So well, the market was okay. It wasn't great. Um, and, you know, not one sale, not one listing. You know, I'd, I'd take this any day of the week, knowing that, you know, we've got the team that we've got and all that we've got to get us through, uh, than going back there. So yeah. for me, this is, this is not, I'm not going to say a, a walk in the park, but it's certainly a challenge and that we can learn from and find opportunity in. Uh, but it's certainly not as difficult as starting from scratch with absolutely nothing. Uh, so we got through that first year in 2010. Uh, 2011, uh, we came uh, by an opportunity to purchase a rent roll in Thomastown. Mm. It was an existing office. Um, it was an independent brand. Um, that was a rent roll that was there for, for quite a number of years with uh, uh, the operator there that had been in real estate for maybe 30 or 40 years. But we decided to act on that and purchase that rent roll. And... Uh, instead of amalgamating that rent roll into our existing Airbnb business, uh, we decided to operate the office, uh, which led to, you know, at that time we were Harcourt's Epping and Harcourt's Thomastown. We did the same thing in 2013 uh, with Harcourt's Mill Park. We purchased an existing rent roll there. And, oh, there we go. That's funny, so. it's, uh, it's only on favourites. Uh, I have my grandfather on just in case he rings me in an emergency. So. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just send that. It? No, I'll send, I'll just send it through to the, uh, send it no. through the line. So 2013, we did the same. Uh, we replicated what we did in Thomastown and purchased a rent roll in Mill Park uh, and got into that that market that way. Um, and then it was 2017 we did Reservoir. Yeah, I think, 2017. I think probably around that time. Yeah. And in between, we did the same with our commercial office. We bought a small commercial rent roll, uh, which helped us to attract a couple of good commercial agents that yeah. we partnered with uh, in that venture. So I guess. David, you asked, you know, what, what's the learning curve for us? Is that What was the catalyst for growth? Yeah. Well, it's much easier to, to, to grow and to open new offices with an existing rent roll. Yeah, it's rent so, roll. You know, when we opened up Epping, we did it with no rent roll. Um, and that was probably the most difficult part of, of our journey. Uh, the other offices, we found that the, the, the journey is easier when you have an existing rent roll that you can plug into that business to start 
advice to anyone out there that's looking to get into their first office or expand into a second or third or whatever it may be, I think the rep role is key because it underpins the strength of the business. It gives you an existing you know, client database to, to work with. Um, but more importantly, it gives you that recurring income that you can rely on as you build the, you know, your business in the background. Of yeah, course. rent roll, rent roll's key. Uh, we, that you could sum it up in that, I reckon. We, we spoke around it yesterday. Yeah, we were talking about it yesterday. Exactly that, and actually, you, you, yeah. you sum it up in two words: rent roll. Um, if there's an opportunity there uh, to potentially look at a purchase, um, that is the quickest way to grow. Absolutely no doubt, and it it provides opportunity. Yeah, that, that's what it does. It opens doors. Um, we bought a commercial rent roll with never doing commercial, not knowing how to do commercial, not ever being in commercial, um, but we purchased it on the basis that we knew that it would be an opportunity that would lead us to somewhere. And it led us to our business partner that came on board, uh, John, John Georgiou, and the rest is history. But that's the key, the opportunity. No, 100%. Okay. So you now have the largest rent roll or the largest property management uh, rent roll in Harcourts for Australia. Um, you don't get there by doing the same as everyone else has done. What do you do differently? Look, I think I think it comes in two folds. I mean, I, I think firstly you've got um, rent roll, which helps you grow exponentially. We're always open to opportunities, so we're always open to looking at um, you know potentially an opportunity to get out there and maybe buy a, a, another rent roll and do all that sort of stuff. But I think we've been able to build a, a pretty good culture. Um, we've got a uh, we've got a really really good team, um, and it's sort of just it's sort of just grown from from that point. I think there's there's I think there's, the word you're looking for Tony is energy. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. Without that, we we'd have nothing. Uh, so how do you bring that? How do you bring the energy? How do you create it? We got we uh, look. I think from a leadership point of view, you've got it's got to start with us. Yep. Yeah. Leadership leadership needs to be energetic. You've got to walk through the door happy. You've got to walk through the door with, with energy to be able to keep going and going and going no matter what the circumstances. And I think that that's been a real testament to us, especially during these last three months. Um, we, we, have been, we have been on the button with everything. We've, uh, we've really been, I, look, I, I'd love to, to get one of my staff members up to, to be able to tell you this because it's, it's all sort of good for us to say it from our end. But um, I'm sure if you speak to our staff, we, we've really made sure that we've tried to communicate with them the whole way, provide them with um, as much information as we possibly could and be able to tell them that it's all okay, it's all good, we're going to get through this, we're going to get through it together as a team and keep moving forward. But that starts with us. Um, we can say it, um, we can tell them, we can try and pitch it as much as we like, we can put out these great social media posts on Facebook and all the rest of it. But if we don't even breathe it ourselves, it's just not going to happen. I mean, I, I, I say to my wife, my wife asks me all the time, and uh, anybody that knows me will tell you that, uh, that, you know, that I just don't stop. I just keep going all the time, 24-7. Um, but, you know, she says to me every day, she goes, I, I can't believe you get up at 5.30 every day and you go to the gym and then you'll go to work and you'll come home and sometimes I'll go for a run after, which she goes, I, I don't understand how you do it. <laughs> I, I do it because I know that I can't, do my normal day-to-day -day nine to five, so to speak, and not that real estate's a nine to five, but you know, if we use it in a metaphorical sense, yes. um, the nine to five, I, I couldn't do that without keeping my body fit, without keeping my mind fit, without eating well. It's impossible to do. In, if, for me, that, that's how I keep it going. I, think, I mean, everybody's different. For me, the, you know, energy starts with mindset. You know, we have a decision every morning that we're, we're, how we're going to approach our day. You know, from a positive aspect or a negative aspect. Um, and it's important that as leaders, we come into the business um, with positivity. That's what creates energy in the office. Yeah. And if you were to walk through our office, you would feel that. It's almost tangible. You can almost feel it. But more importantly, the environment that we create in our office with that energy, that translates to what we do out in the public. Whether we're out on the street, calling an auction on site, which we can't wait to get back to. <laughs> but even if you watch our online auctions, You'll feel that energy come through the screen. You'll feel the energy of the team, even though you can't see them. You'll feel the energy of our brand uh, and our company. And I think that that energy, it becomes an attractant. It, it attracts good good people to our business in terms of staff. Yeah. It also attracts good good you know, client relationships and helps us to build a, a database. 
good relationships with our suppliers, good relationships with everybody, to be really honest with you. Guys, you clearly, uh, yeah, you are a very energetic team. There's, uh, there's no doubt about that. It comes through, uh, it comes through the very screen. So um, I can see that's a, a key strategy for your, uh, for your business. Okay, guys. So partnerships are very important to you, and especially when you've got a four, five office network, um, it's really uh, paramount and prudent that you partner with the right, the right suppliers. Um, who are some of the key guys that you're working with at the moment? Look, I think as we mentioned before, um, Big Track has probably been the, the catalyst for us to, to start exploring the digital world. And that, and that happened, you know, maybe 18 months ago, I reckon. Um, we're at uh, Macquarie Bank um, and uh, we had our uh, business planning session. And probably a shout out to Macquarie Bank as well, because they've been a, a great supporter of ours for a, for a very long time, to be honest with you. Um, and I think we, we sat down and went through a bit of that digital world with um, with Bitracker and what they could do and some of the automation. So Bitracker were originally around. offering yeah. you a uh, an online plat- auction platform? Uh, no. So, well, it, uh, they've got some some elements of that, but it's more around... Um, you can follow the bidding online. Yeah, you can follow the bidding exactly. sequence. Yeah. Um, but it's more around uh, authorities. Um, so real-time agent, Bitracker, I, I probably should mention both their brand names. Um, so, real-time agent um, will take care of the uh, the, the, con- uh, the the initial authorities. So we were able to work through them with that uh, on our auctions, exclusives, and, and general authorities. And that sort of flows then into Bid Tracker, um, which will track your bidding, uh, will allow clients to be able to see the sequence of bidding, uh, and then we obviously digitally sign contracts. And we've also just recently, probably a few months ago, moved into the private sales side of that. So they've been really, really good with that, um, being able to provide that that platform. I mean, obviously our internet providers have been really, really good. Uh, I think the, the community feel that we've been able to get with, with Homely has probably hit the mark for us, um, that we're able to, to get clients a little bit more involved in the sale of their property, um, to be able to go in and put in um, reviews and do all that sort of stuff has really sort of worked for us uh, over the short term. I think the, the biggest thing about those two suppliers as well is the fact that we've got really strong relationships with um, with our uh, our account managers. Uh, so obviously Andrew with Big Tracker and Steve with um, with Homely, they're always in contact with us. We're always speaking to them. They're willing to take a little bit of feedback back so that we could um, we can sort of tailor what we need for us. Um, you don't get that with everybody, unfortunately. Um, and I think that we've been able to help them get a better product, but also help ourselves at the same time and help our clients um, by having that open lines of communication. Also, I think in, in this time, to, to elaborate on Tony's point, in this time, the suppliers that, that have really stood out in our mind have been the ones that, that you can tell that they really care, that they're yeah. with you. Um, yeah, Tony mentioned Steve's, you know, Steve Glenn through Homely, um, we're always on the phone with him. <laughs> and speaking to him at least once or twice a week. Uh, I can say the same uh, about our rep from Dye Creek, uh, who does all our, our photography. Yeah, so I'm always on the phone with Adam Patini. Um, anyway, Auctions has come to the party too. We've had a sort of relationship with them in the past and sort of toyed with their platform a little bit here and there. But uh, when we needed to really roll it out, they were there from, from day one. So yeah, you know, the the suppliers that that you know care are really showing that at the moment, and they I suppose they're always there with whatever we need. Yeah. Um, and they're actually, they're not waiting for us to pick up the phone. And sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, Steve, you know, pick up the phone and say, hey, boys, how, how are you doing? Is there anything we can help with, you know? And whether we need that help or not, yeah. you know, just him doing that means so much to us. Yeah. I think the other, and like I've touched on before, but Macquarie Bank have been a, a massive supporter of ours. And to be honest with you, um, they've been hand in hand with us in our growth. Um, always have we, been got able a, to, have we got a loan application at the moment? We do have a loan application <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> but that's not the point. Uh, it, it, regardless of that, they are, they are, they, they have been really, really good for us. Um, look, to be honest with you, I mean, some of the, the we've had a few reps along the way, um, but the guys have been absolutely outstanding, being able to provide us what we require to be able to grow, um, with assisting us with finance and your rent roll purchases, um, you know building purchases, all that sort of stuff now have really, really assisted us. And without them, I mean, they, they you would nearly say that they're our number one partner in regards of, you know, the, the exponential growth, to be fair. 
Okay, man, I'm going to finish off with, uh, well, guys, I'm going to finish off with one last question. And I just want to know what growth opportunities you see um, in the coming months. Is it another office? Is it, is it plural? Is it, um, where do you see some real growth opportunities for Rada and Co over the coming quarter? I think, well, I think there's going to be massive opportunities. Yeah. Um, I, I hate to say it, but I believe that there'll probably be officers coming out of this that haven't done what, what needs to be done yeah. to get through this. Um, there'll be opportunities for those officers looking to, to scale down or, or to, to get out. Um, I think there'll be massive opportunity to take market share. Right now, um, the, the market's still quite buoyant. And I think what's driving that at the moment uh, is the lack of stock. Um, for every every two listings that you list now is worth five in terms of market yeah. share. Uh, so I think there's, there's a great opportunity to, for those that don't have market share to take it, for those that do have market share to increase that market share to... Uh, to cement themselves as leaders in their markets. Um, I think the opportunities are just going to be endless and, and everywhere. And you need to be active now in order to take advantage of those as we come out of this, because it's too late. Once the wheels start turning again, and if that's when you, you, you plan on starting the engine and, and you know, getting out there, you're already behind. Right now is the time uh, to make sure that you're, you're, you're active, make sure that you've got energy in the office, make sure that you've got you know, all your team on board, so when the market shifts, you're, you're there to take advantage. So I think, um, I've, I've gone on record on saying many times that hope's not a strategy, we must plan. I think the plan that we had um, from the get-go was that there was that our competitors or some of our competitors were going to see this as a, as a dead end and potentially uh, maybe not get out there and do the things that they needed to do. I think our plan was is that we were going to work harder and we were going to work faster and we've got to work better at everything that we did um, while this was going on. Uh, so that when we got out the other end, uh, we were going to be in a much better position. I, I, that's I, always our plan. Well, it's plan. always been our plan, but I think we, we, we stepped that up to another level. I, I, I mean, I think I've worked, I've worked more now having this sort of technology, you know, your Zoom meetings and your calls and stuff like that. I think the other day we were, on, we were online with a, with a digital tech provider at nine o'clock at night. Um, who lived in Ireland. Um, and that's the sort of stuff at the moment that we're, you know, we're, we're exploring every option. We're lifting up every rock. We're just trying to find out what we can do, how we can do it better, how we can get our team in front of it, um, and really trying to give everybody, our clients especially, an opportunity to be able to utilise the, 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 the work that we've done in the back end um, to then translate into a better price or less time, you know, without a tenant or you know, getting a tenant into a property quicker, or even finding a buyer a, a property that suits their requirements that other agents weren't able to find. So I think for us, it's a it, there's, there's there's a few different things along the way to be able to move forward with. But you know, um, you've got a plan. You've got to put a plan in place. You can't hope. Um, I, you know, I was just talking to some of the guys from Harcourts the other day, and they were saying that um, there's some some stories out there of agents that have gone home and shut the door and haven't really, you know, done too much because they you know, they don't know what to do. I told my guys the first thing you need to do is pick up the phone and don't put it down and just keep on going. That's good. Guys, uh, love the energy and uh, looking forward to seeing the uh, the growth over the coming months. We'll be watching closely uh, your office. It seems like it's, uh, it's really on the move. So thank you for giving us a bit of time today. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks very much. We really appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Cheers guys. Cheers.